Hello there folks, it is Toby from TIJ Music and welcome to a brand new video. Today we continue the Toby's Favourite Albums From series. This is the third instalment of the series. We've done 1976, 1977 and today we have another nine albums for you from the year after 1978. I mean, every time I do these, I think, oh my god, this is such a fantastic year. How can it possibly be beaten? But this one is probably the best of the three and... They're just all so outstanding. Uh, it was so hard to pick a top three. But we'll get straight into it today. The format we do this in, we go through the albums in chronological order, talk through, uh, through them a little bit, and then list my top three. So first is a release from Judas Priest, the 10th of February, the first of two Judas Priest releases from 1978. Um, and this is one I probably prefer over the other, but the other one is still a fantastic album. So first off, we have the Stained Class album from Judas Priest. Now, I haven't got the vinyl on the window today, because as you can see, I'm recording this a little bit late, so I don't want to ruin or warp that, uh, the covers, by any extent. But it's a great album. Absolutely fantastic album, is Stain Class. Exciter, White Heat, Red Hot, Better By You, Better Than Me, Stain Class, Invader, that's side one. Saints in Hell, Savage, Behind the, Beyond the Realms of Death and Heroes End. I mean, I look at them, you just think killer track after killer track after killer track. It's absolutely brilliant. Um, my favourites from the album, Exciter, the title track, Invader, Saints in Hell's brilliant, but you can't beat Beyond the Realms of Death. I mean, that's an absolutely fantastic, tra uh, fantastic track. Really good album. Um, probably the best Judas Priest album. It's up there with probably British Steel, in my opinion anyway. I know a lot of people like the later albums, but for me, it's either this or British Steel for the best Judas Priest album. But wow, absolutely fantastic. I only listened to this again a few weeks ago and how bloody tremendous it was. Trouble is, I've not got a room, not room on my desk now for two, for two piles. First world problems, eh? Second up, um, from the 9th of April, 1978, released on the Polydor label, um, it is the band's third album. Don't go back to it as much as the second, because you all know how much I love the second album by Rainbow. Of course, I am talking about their 1978 release, Long Live, Rock and Roll. Great album. Great album cover as well. Um, I saw quite a funny post on Twitter about this that said uh, wouldn't quite work if they didn't all have long hair, would it? Certainly wouldn't, but a great cover. And we have got the limited edition special price edition. Um, and just to keep you updated on my vinyl LP collection, um, I had got two of these. I bought the second one uh, in a lot with the first and second Rainbow albums. Um, and I managed to sell this for £10. So I bought the whole lot for 18 and I sold this for 10 So very good. After eBay fees, I took home £7.80. So the other two albums have only cost me just over £10. So good result there. Um, but let's talk about the album. Um, obviously all tracks written by Blackmore and Dio, apart from the odd one, uh, Kill the King and the Shed, which Cozy Powell has writing credits on. Um, Blackmore, Dio and Powell, the only three remaining from that Ryzen album, um, the bass player and the keyboard player are different. We've got Bob Daisley, is it Bob Daisley on bass and David Stone on keyboards. Title track, absolute killer. Um, one of my favourites on this album is Rainbow Eyes. About an eight and a half minute track, the last one of the album, and it's brilliant. It's it's so unlike Rainbow in many ways, but it's so slow, it's a real cracking track. Uh, almost a ballad really, if you like. Um, and another favourite of mine from the album, L.I. Collection. Good album, not their best, but a very, very good album nonetheless. Right, third up, we have an album which I don't actually own, unfortunately, but this is from the 5th of May. We have got another album from this artist coming up later, and I do own that. But we're going to have to look and scroll down the Word document a little bit just to see what the tracks are on the European LP release. Anyway, this from the... Did I say when it was from? The 5th of May. The 5th of May, 1978, it was released. Powerage or Power Rage by ACDC. What a brilliant album. Uh, good stuff again, not considered by me to be their best, um, it's probably in their top five, but certainly not the best, I think they're probably um, bagging Back in Black, Highway to Hell and High Voltage, and probably Let There Be Rock, you could argue beat this, but an absolutely stellar album, um, Rock and Roll Damnation, Give Me a Bullet, Down Payment Blues, Gone Shooting, and Re 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 Raff on side one, side two, Sin City up to my neck in you, What's Next to the Moon, Cold, cold Hearted Man and Kicked in the Teeth. Rock and Roll Damnation, awesome track. Really good tracks here, but particularly Riff Raff is one of my favourites. Sin City as well, Cold Hearted Man. Brilliant, absolutely brilliant album. Um, I, I don't like it as much as I like Back in Black, probably. This is weird, because it's a year of fantastic albums. It might not have those absolute standout albums that you look and go, wow, 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 wow. Fantastic stuff in terms of it being 
an artist's best, but there is a really fantastic selection of albums here, and Power Age um, is one of those. So a brilliant album. Um, yeah, absolutely fantastic, but we have got another ICDC album coming up later. So next on the list it is a live album. Um, this was released on the 2nd of June from Finn Lizzy. I, of course, am talking about the epic, the absolute epic Finn Lizzy Live and Dangerous. Oh, what an album. Um, featuring, I've talked about this before on my 10 albums that have inspired me video, and this is fantastic. Jailbreak, Emerald, Southbound, Rosalie, Dancing in the Moonlight, Massacre, Still in Love with You, Johnny the Fox meets Jimmy the Weed, Cowboy Song, The Boys Are Back in Town, Don't Believe a World, a Word, sorry, Warrior, Are You Ready, Suicide, Sha La La, Baby Drives Me Crazy in the Rocker. Generally, most of these tracks from the fighting, um, Jailbreak, Johnny the Fox, and Bad Reputation. In fact, there's only, is there only the one from the fighting album? Yes, there is. Just Rosalie from that album, but... Oh man, absolutely fantastic stuff, Live and Dangerous. My favourite live album of all time. Brilliant. Uh, double LP, starts with the brilliant Jailbreak. Cowboy Song on side three. I mean, still in love with you on side two. That's probably my favourite Finn Lizzy song. And the version here is absolutely tremendous. Absolutely fantastic. Emerald, any of the girls here who would like a little bit more Irish in them. Oh, brilliant. Southbound, Rosalie. It... it brilliant absolutely fantastic live album and as a as an introduction to Finn Lizzy it's fantastic iconic album cover iconic album absolutely fantastic this one from the 2nd of June absolutely awesome uh, we'll move through them quite quickly and that is the aim today I don't want to go on too long um, but the next album is from just a week later the 9th of June not really like an album I've included on these lists before this is technically a soundtrack album but it's not really it's a concept album it is a musical version of a famous book from the 9th of June. Ugh, you can't go wrong. You cannot go wrong with Jeff Wayne's musical version of The War of the Worlds. Absolutely awesome stuff. I don't know, I know I keep using the same adjectives to describe each album, but it's just killer after killer after killer album in 1978. Um, let's get the lyric sheet out here. I did pick this up uh, about six months back probably now for... For £10, and my God, is it worth it. A double LP, um, if you've never listened to this album, it is well worth it. This is the lyric sheet. On the back, we've got all of the famous people in it. Richard Burton, Julie Covington, David Essex, Phil Linnett from Finn Lizzy, um, Justin Hayward from the Moody Blues, Joe Partridge, of course, Jeff Wayne, uh, Chris Thompson. Uh, absolutely fantastic. Absolutely brilliant. A double album. Um, I listened to this a few months ago um, on the way to work and back, and it took me two days from work and back to listen to this. Um, the Eve of the War, da -da 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 brilliant, absolutely fantastic. Forever Autumn, oh man. Uh, of course, a uh, Moody Blues and Justin Hayward song originally, but fits so well with this uh, with this concept. Thunder Child, fantastic. Um, the Spirit of Man is really the highlight, I think personally, with Julie Covington uh, and the Parson, Parson, Parson Nathaniel uh, filled in it. Absolutely fantastic. Uh, Brave New World, Dead London. It's absolutely fantastic. Horse or Common in the Heat Ray, uh, The Artillery Man in the Fighting Machine. Absolutely fantastic. And uh, I haven't shown this one off before, so I'm just going to flick through anything that I think is interesting. I mean, the artwork for this album is incredible. Absolutely incredible. Um, th there's not much more you can say about it until you go and listen. This is obviously the iconic picture. Um, I think it's on the Thames. I think it's meant to be on the Thames. I could be wrong. Um, but yeah, absolutely tremendous. The Thunder Child vanished forever, taking with her man's last hope of victory. The earth belonged to the Martians. Brilliant. Absolutely fantastic stuff. Um, again, this is the Red Weed. I mean, honestly, if you haven't listened to this, it is a treasure. It is a real treasure. Um, I've also got the CD version. In fact, I've got it on CD. I've got highlights from the War of the Worlds. And I've got the LP. Tremendous stuff. Um, absolutely fantastic. From Jeff Wayne, uh, his musical version of War in the Worlds. He has done a second one since. He's done one with Liam Neeson as the narrator. Uh, Gary Barlow's in it, I think. Um, it, it doesn't really... Never, They never do, do they? It, it's, it doesn't quite add up to how good the original is, but absolutely tremendous. So if you get a chance to listen to this, um, I'd absolutely recommend it. What a concept album. Absolutely fantastic. 
So number six on the list is one that, uh, again, unfortunately I haven't got. I've got seven of these. There's only two I haven't got. This is from the 23rd of September. Um, a little bit different, an artist I haven't covered yet, but Blondie. Uh, Parallel Lines by Blondie from the 23rd of September. Um, hanging on the telephone, the nerves cover. Brilliant. On one way or another, picture this. Fade away and radiate. Pretty baby. I know, but I don't know. 11.59. Will anything happen? Sunday Girl. Heart of Glass, which wasn't on the original album. I needed to take that out. I'm going to love you too and just go away. I think Heart of Glass wasn't on the original album. I think it was a single, but most of those were on the original album. Um, potentially just taking away Heart of Glass. But particularly those first two tracks are absolutely awesome. Fader Rain Radiate is probably my favourite of the four. I've probably heard the other three a little bit too much over the years, but Blondie's best album in my opinion. Uh, I'm not a massive Blondie fan, but this is just absolute stellar stuff. Uh, a really good album. One I go back to fairly regularly, Sunday Girl, Heart of Glass, of course, massive single. Uh, Pretty Baby, I know, but I don't know. 11.59, will anything happen? I'm Gonna Love You Too. Brilliant cover from the Buddy Holly classic. Uh, and Just Go Away. Really good album. Parallel Lines by Blondie. Um, yeah, Debbie Harry, one of the best female vocalists of all time. Fact. Right, um, we are coming up to the finishing stretch. The seventh album of nine from the 9th of October, the second release from Judas Priest in 1978. Not as good as its predecessor, but nevertheless a stellar album. Killing Machine. The album that came before British Steel. A brilliant album, a little bit more of a, um, what's it called, commercial. A little bit more of a commercial move here, um, with tracks like Take on the World, but delivering the goods, Hellbent for Leather. It was called Hellbent for Leather um, in the US, because Killing Machine, obviously, for obvious reasons, was seen to not be very tactful from the band, called Hellbent for Leather in the US. Delivering the goods, Rock Forever, Evening Star, Hellbent Forever, Take on the World, Burning Up, Killing Machine, Running Wild Before the Dawn, Evil Fantasies. As I said before, I do quite like the slower stuff on these albums, so Before the Dawn is absolutely tremendous. Uh, but the heavier stuff, Delivering the Goods, Hellbent Forever, awesome. Not a massive fan of Take on the World, it's very much like United from the British Steel album, it's not great, but it's okay. Uh, Rock Forever, Brilliant, Evening Star, Burning Up, Killing Machine, the title track over in the UK, Running Wild. Evil Fantasies, brilliant, really good album, not as good as its predecessor, it's a little bit more of a commercial sound, not that darkness you get on tracks like Beyond the Realms of Death from Stain Class, but still a very credible effort um, by Rob Halford's Judas Priest. So, two albums to go, only four days late this one came out, the smallest gap between albums here, I don't think you'd be able to get two albums of this uh, magnitude and brilliance in the space of five days nowadays. Another live album, the second one on today's list, I am talking about... ACDCs if you want blood. Oh man, oh man, oh man, oh man. Riff Raff, Hell Ain't a Bad Place to Be, Bad Boy Boogie, The Jack, Problem Child, Whole Lot of Rosie, Rock and Roll Damnation, High Voltage, Let There Be Rock, and Rocker. Oh man. Absolutely fantastic. All tracks recorded live during the 1978 World Tour. The classic cover with Angus with the guitar through his stomach. Absolutely awesome. Um, Favourites from this, Riff Raff, the title, not the title track, but the first track, Riff Raff, uh, The Jack's Great Live, Whole Lot of Rosie, awesome, Whole, uh, Rock and Roll Damnation, High Voltage, Let, Let There Be Rock. A lot of people say, right, that they're not too keen on the Bon Scott era, and, well, a lot of people, not a lot of people don't say, but I've heard some people say that, well, ACDC have only really got the airplay hits from Back in Black, and to those people, I present you with this. Absolute banger after banger, and I know that's something that us younger younger folk lose. So, absolute classic after classic. Riff Raff, brilliant track. The Jack, brilliant track. Whole lot of Rosie. I mean, Let There Be Rock's one of the best rock tracks of all time. Really is high voltage rock and roll damnation. Um, all the way from the first album, all the way through to the previous album. So Power Age. Uh, Riff Raff from Power Age. Hell ain't the best place to be. Bad Boy Boogie. Problem Child. Whole lot of Rosie. And Let There Be Rock. All from the Let There Be Rock album. Uh, rock and Roll Damnation uh, and Riff Raff from Powerage. High Voltage, of course, on that uh, High Voltage track uh, album, as well as, high, uh, as well as the Jack, sorry. Brilliant album. Really good live album. I'm going to tell you now, this narrowly misses out on the top three. But in most years, this would be second or first. It's just because it's such a good year. And that's, that's really how I've judged it this year to be so good. Because this is not in the top three. And neither is the next one. Neither is the next one. And one of the best debut albums of all time. This is from the 2nd of November. From The Police. Outland Oster Moore. This is um, a Filipino pressing. 
I know, absolutely crazy. I, I, I've spoken to my dad. Where the hell did you get these from back in the day? Absolutely no idea. Uh, but awesome. Absolutely brilliant debut. And I don't think this was seriously beaten until their last album, Synchronicity. Uh, next to you, So Lonely, Roxanne, Holy My Life, Peanuts, Can't Stand Losing You. Truth to everybody, Born in the 50s, Be My Girl Sally. What a strange track, but brilliant nonetheless. Uh, and Masoko Tanga. Andy Summers on guitar, Stuart Copeland on drums, and Sting on bass and vocals. Now, the police were really seen as a new wave band, and I could understand that from the second record onwards, but this is rock and roll. This is rock and roll, particularly tracks like Next to You, Roxanne, uh, So Lonely, Can't Stand Losing You. There's just so many incredible tracks on here, particularly the first three tracks from side one, at least in my opinion, the first three tracks from side two. Uh, next to you, So Lonely Roxanne and Can't Stand Losing You, Trophy to Everybody and Born in the 50s. Particularly those on side two are rock and roll, rock tracks, simple as. Um, this was released with the red colour and kind of a bluey colour as well, which I've got on the Every Move You Make box set. I'm pointing back there because my CDs are in that drawer. If you can't, what's back there that's a special? Uh, it's just the CD drawer and I've got this, it's, it's a blue colour at the top and most of these albums did come with a blue colour for some crazy reason back in the day. My dad ended up with a, a pressing from the Philippines. Brilliant album, though, Outland Austin Moore. So, we now come up to the top three. And as you've seen, obviously, that's the nine albums. That's the nine albums from that year that I hold dearest to my heart for being the best albums of 1978. But the clue is in the title. My favourite albums of 1978. Not the best albums of 1978. There are some albums, of course, that don't get in. There are some artists that I'm not too familiar with, some artists I don't like that don't get in there that, of course, might well be in your list. But the number three for today goes to the first album on the list, Stained Class. Now, I said in my Facebook post when I did this originally, for Stained Class not to be top or second, it must be a bloody good year. Stained Class is fantastic. I've said it before, but it's, it's unbelievable. Absolutely unbelievable, particularly beyond the realms of death, but there's not a bad track in it. And most albums really struggle to do that and go without a bad track. Brilliant. So that's number three, Stained Class. Number two, um, might surprise you a little, or it might not do. I don't know. This is a brilliant double LP. Jeff Wayne's musical version of The War of the Worlds. Brilliant. Absolutely stellar stuff. Um, one of a kind when it comes to an album, and that's why it's there, but it's not quite number one because something beats it just slightly, just slightly. Uh, but of course, featuring Richard Burton, Julie Covington, David, uh, Julie Covington, David Essex, Justin Hayward, Phil Linnett, Joe Partridge, and Chris Thompson. Stella. I might listen to this one later. If you haven't listened to this, I've said it about four times now. If you haven't listened to this, listen to it. It's brilliant. I might do a review of that at some stage. If you want to see that, let me know down in the comments. But top of the pile today... And it had to be. It really had to be only one. I've said this for my last two favourite albums from such and such year. Because there are such good albums that one album just beats the rest. And of course I am talking about the live double LP from Fiddle Easy, Live and Dangerous. Many consider this to be their best album overall. Never mind the studio album. Never mind any live albums. And it's very rare you can say that of an artist. Some people say it about Kiss. I don't agree. But I can see where they're coming from with Fiddle Easy. Live and Dangerous, absolutely awesome. That takes the number one spot on today's show of favourite albums from 1978. And I don't think many of you would disagree with me there. Yeah, absolute killer. Um, I wasn't listening to this the other day. I was listening to the UK Tour 75 album. And some of the uh, older tracks from that. And I think Lizzie were just a great live band. I think the most underrated hard rock group of all time. I really do think so. They had a killer set of albums all the way from... Nightlife, I mean, all the way up to the end, Thunder and Lightning. I'm not so keen on those first three albums, but from Nightlife onwards, it's brilliant. Absolutely fantastic. And some of the best is highlighted here. Unfortunately, not much of the Fighting album, which is a really good album. That's on uh, the UK Tour 75 album, but particularly the version of Still in Love with You. Okay, some of the favourites here Still in Love with You, Suicide, brilliant live, absolutely fantastic. The Rocker, a rock and roll track, absolutely fantastic live. Cowboy song, brilliant live. The Boys Are Back, brilliant live, although it's overplayed to hell. Johnny the Fox meets Jimmy the Weed, brilliant live. Better live than on the studio album. Still enough for you. Better live than on the studio album. Massacre, awesome. Dancing in the Loom Moonlight, awesome. Finley's, you do not put a foot wrong here. That is why that is my number one album from 1978. So what are your favourite albums from 1978? Make sure to let me know down in the comments. And if you've enjoyed this, 
make sure to leave a like down below and um, comment your thoughts subscribe because it really helps the channel um, as I'm trying to build up more content on the channel uh, now next week I don't know if I'm going to do 1979 because I didn't get such a big list for 1979 there's about five or six albums but if you still want to see that let me know um, but I've got list for 80 81 as well so a few weeks to go um, of this series and then I've done top threes for 82 all the way through to 1990 if you want to see those let me know down in the comments. Thank you very much for your company today. I hope you guys have enjoyed the video. Um, there'll be four videos in the end screen for you to go and check out if you want to continue your listening experience here at TIJ Music. I'll probably put the two previous videos that are in this series somewhere, um, and they'll also be my most recent upload and the best for you. So the best for a viewer um, out of the archives on the channel. But I hope you enjoyed. Remember, during these times, remember to continue to take care and stay safe. That is the most important thing to remember. Rock on to albums like Long Live Rock and Roll, Stay in Class, Power Rays, Live and Dangerous, Parallel Lines, Killer Machine. If you want blood, you got it. Just a brilliant year, 1978. And it's so close between this and other years, but I just think this is just about pips it. Certainly pips the other two years anyway. But uh, thank you very much for watching. I've been Toby from TIJ Music. And until the next time, thank you for watching, and I'll see you all later. Goodbye for now.